Creating a backup image using ESA's To Do Free. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. So we have ESA's To Do installed on our Windows 11 machine. If you haven't walked through that, there's a separate video for that that I suggest you run through because my one complaint about ESIS is that they will promote their paid version very heavily. And for what we're about to do, you don't need it. You may choose to use it later because the free version does have some limitations, but focus on getting the free version. Here you can see we've got the free version installed and running, and we'll just click on Create Backup. What we want to back up, what we want to back up for an image backup is a disk. The disk we want to back up is the disk that has C on it. You can see that here C, my system drive, is listed as part of hard disk zero. Now, hard disk one exists, and that's the side effect of this particular machine, where it actually is a second hard disk. I'm treating it as my fake USB, and it's where we're going to be putting the backup we create. Click on OK. This says E my backups. And in fact, that is where we're going to place it. If on the other hand, you wanted it to go to a different location, you would click on that. Local drive. My faux USB, my backups is fine. But like I said, they actually selected the correct destination by default first on its own. That's great. Just make sure it's where you want it to go. In almost every case, that should be your external hard drive that's going to contain your backup images. And we can review the options that are available here. Uh, backup is image mode, priority doesn't really matter, compression. I like to take compression up high just so that we end up with smaller files. The backup will take perhaps a little bit longer depending on your machine, but that's really about all the, the only thing we really need to do here. Uh, performance, compression, we did that. Uh, splitting, we don't need. We're not going to encrypt. If you want to encrypt your backups, here's where you would do it. And you would type in a password that would be required to use this backup image later if you so choose. Offsite copy, we're not doing. File settings, we're not doing. Uh, disk and volume settings, we are not doing a sector by sector backup. This is important. A sector-by-sector -sector backup would actually be more akin to what I consider to be a clone. A clone would actually have all of the files in their original layout and all of the empty sectors. If you were looking to perhaps copy a disk with the intent of being able to recover deleted files from it later, this might be what you want. A non-sector-by-sector -sector actually copies files. It ignores how things are laid out on the disk and doesn't back up any of the free space. It only backs up what's actually currently stored on the disk, which is what you want. The user account doesn't really matter at this point since we're going to run it ourselves. Now up here we see backup scheme. Uh, this is a one-time backup. If we were going to try and schedule things, we could do things here. Backup filter would allow us to actually not back up certain files, which is kind of interesting. Sometimes you don't really need all of the files. From my way of thinking, an image backup, by definition, wants everything. I don't want to have to make decisions about what to back up or what not to back up. So I'm going to strongly recommend you leave the backup filter off. Backup notification, there's various ways that you may get notification for what we're doing here today. This is not something we need to deal with. We'll hit back and click on backup now. The backup starts. Obviously, I'm not going to make you sit through the entire backup. So we're going to let the backup proceed at high speed by the magic of fast forward, and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. And we're done. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that how long your backup will take will vary dramatically based on how much data is on your hard disk, how fast your hard disk is, how fast the interface to your external disk is, and how fast that external disk is itself. So there are a lot of factors that come into play here. The other thing I wanted to point out here, I don't know if you were paying attention to the estimated time. When this particular backup started, 
it gave me an estimate of something like 15 or 16 minutes. And you can see that the actual result was more along the line of about maybe three minutes. That number changed throughout the backup, going as low as an estimate of two minutes and finally coming back up. Estimation is really, really hard. So just don't necessarily believe the numbers that you see as things are being backed up. But the bottom line here is that we have successfully created an image backup of this machine. How do we know? What does it look like? Well, the thing to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just close ESIS to do because we're pretty much done with it. Open up Windows File Explorer, go out to my faux USB drive and in my backups folder, you'll see there's disk zero. And there you'll see this disk zero with today's date and actually modified as today's time that contains the entire image. If you wanted to look at it, see what was inside. Great. Double click on it. And now we can actually go through the faux USB, my backups, disk zero, the file or folder that contains it all. There's the backed up copy of C. You can now traverse the entire copy of the C drive to extract perhaps whatever it is you want. Or more importantly, perhaps for this exercise, confirm that the backup has happened as you expected. But that's it. That is all it really takes to create an image backup using ESIS to do. I suggest you get used to this. You do this. You practice it a time or two. It's a great thing to do immediately prior to things like system upgrades, large software installed, untrusted software installs, or whatever. This is what I recommend instead of a restore point. For comments, for updates, for links related to this example and more, visit askleo.com slash 29600. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.